Hello guys, welcome to this new video. This one is a requested video for question number two. So let's see what we have here. So here we have the three points A, B, and C. They are given to you. Okay, so part one, find the gradient of the line through AB. So we have to find the gradient of the line AB. So pretty easy, as you guys know already. Gradient can be found by using your formula, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So A, B is these two points, so y2, 4 minus 8, over 12 minus 9, that should be minus 4, over, so 12 minus 9 is 3. So that is your gradient for part 1, minus 4 over 3. Now for part 2, the equation of the line through C is parallel to AB. So we have to find the equation of the line through C. So the good thing we know is that we know the passing point is the so uh, sorry we know a point on the line will be a point C. For example, let's say this is a line passing through C. The point here is four minus two. So now to find the equation of that line, we just need to find the gradient, right? So because we know this information, when the line is parallel to the other line, it means that they have the same gradient. So the gradient of this line is the same as minus 4 over 3. So we can find the equation of the line pretty easily. So use this point. This is your x, this is your y. So you write y minus minus 2 become 2 plus 2 divided by x minus 4 is equal to minus 4 over 3. So now we can cross multiply. You will have 3y plus 6 is equal to minus 4x plus 16. So 3y is equal to minus 4x plus 10. So that is your equation through C of the line through C, which is parallel to AB. That is part two of your question. Now let's move on to part B. Calculate the length of the line segment. First one is AB. So pretty easy to find this length we can use our formula right so a b is square root we know the point so let's do x um, 2 minus x 1 that will be 3 square plus 4 minus 8 is minus 4 square so 4 square that should be 9 plus 16 that will be 25 so your answer will be 5 so same thing here find the length of BC so we have this minus this should be uh, so it's 8 square and then this minus this should be 6 square so you will have 64 plus 36 that will be 100 and the length will be 10 so this is units units so part 1 part 2 done now for part 3 we have to show that AB is perpendicular to BC. So one way of showing this is we have to show that the gradient of AB multiplying by the gradient of BC has to give you minus 1. That's one way to show that they are perpendicular. Now we know the gradient of AB has been given to you already. As you can see, we have that uh, right here, minus 4 over 3. Now what is the gradient of BC? So let's find this using the points that we have been given. So gradient of BC will be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That should be minus 6 over minus 8, which is 3 over 4. So replace this value in your equation. You get 3 over 4. That is actually equal to minus 1, shown as required that it is perpendicular. Now for part D, calculate the area of ABC. So we can use this information and this to find this area. So from this you have known that AB is perpendicular to BC. So let me make a drawing here to, um, to kind of understand what's happening. So I have the line AB which is in this direction. AB right 
and we have been given that it is perpendicular to BC so it has a right angle to BC okay now we have to find the area of triangle ABC so this will be your triangle as you can see we have a right angle triangle and how do you find area of triangle so you should know by now area of triangle is equal to half time base times height so the base here is BC and the length of BC is equal to 10 so half times 10 and the height is AB it is equal to 5 so 5 that will be 5 times 5 that will be 25 units square that will be your area of triangle ABC okay so that will be your question number two that is the requested question so I hope that was somewhat helpful as always guys if you guys have any questions requests just let me know in the comments and I will get back to you thank you for watching I will see you soon